On today's show, we're going to stiffen up your printer using linear rail. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here three times a week. On today's show, we got a lot of great information for you. We're going to dive into telling you, or showing you, not telling you, we're going to show you the differences between the traditional way that we set up our 3D printers and a product that has made 3D printers work a little bit smoother. They're called linear rails. All right, so here we have a linear rail. What is a linear rail? Well, it's a stiff piece of metal that has been machined, as you can see, and it has a block, what we call a bearing block. And you can see very closely in there that we've got little ball bearings. And how these ball bearings work is that they move across the bearing back and forth very smoothly. You can see them moving. They go in a continuous loop around uh, the inside of this block. So do you need grease for these? Absolutely. You have to grease these up much like you would any other type of bearing. But what is the advantage of this over our traditional uh, rod and um, bearing setup? Well, when we use a traditional rod and bearing setup, typically what will happen is these rods are not always straight. And what can happen is that this can get bound up. And I can feel it actually binding up on this one right now. There's we're actually doing this dry. There is no lubrication inside this ball bearing sleeve at all. If I take this off, it's pretty hard to see down in there, but you can see that there are some little ball bearings and they work much in the same fashion as the ball bearings in here. Only these don't travel around um, an, a spring, uh, essentially. What these will do is they will roll in place. So if you've got a traditional rod and bearing setup, what can happen is if these aren't perfectly aligned, you can actually push the little ball bearings out of these bearings and that can cause even more trouble for you. And typically these are a lot noisier as well. I don't know how well the mic is picking that up, but these are a lot noisier, especially if you don't grease them. And a lot of new people that are building 3D printers tend not to grease them because they don't know any better. And I'm guilty of that too. When I build a printer, um, nowadays, of course, if they've got these types of bearings on them, I always grease them with a little bit of lithium grease. But uh, in the early days of me building printers, I never did it at all. And I found what I was doing was scoring the rod and causing little grooves to be put into it. And what that does, when they, when they wear in little grooves, they can get caught. Um, and then, of course, you can have failed prints. Where these make a big difference is because there's A, more bearings in them, B, they're a flat setup, and they ride right inside these little grooves here. You can see them here on the camera. And these are typically a much stiffer metal than what you're going to find in a traditional um, rod bearing, and these will hold on. What you don't want to do with these is, of course, take these bearings off uh, because what can happen is that the bearings can all fall out, especially in less expensive uh, block setups. Uh, you can see this one. This is not a great one. This one has already come off, and you can see down in here, we've already lost a couple of the bearings. You see how there's that little gap there? Um, now, this is traditionally a inexpensive Chinese version of a bearing. The steel is great. Now it has holes every 50 millimeters. Um, so it's every 50 millimeters, it's got a hole that you can affix to a uh, piece of extrusion uh, if you're building a printer. These are typically used in higher end printers just because of the way that they work. And if they're installed correctly and straight, you get no binding. Whereas with this setup, you can get binding very easily. With this setup, as long as they're in straight, this piece of metal is usually 
always straight and flat and you can always test that out if you need to but uh, most manufacturers will ship this as being nice and straight and flat and then your bearings just move nice and simply and there are a lot less noise that come from these types of bearings than there are from these types of bearings now we've got a printer here in studio uh, this is uh, Brian Baker's printer. This is his Franken printer, as I like to call it. Um, you can see there's this nice big spaghetti of wiring over here. And Brian's done some, some amazing upgrades on this. And you know me, I'm the guy who says, don't upgrade. But in this case, um, what Brian has done here is, is some really ingenious stuff. He's actually put linear rails down here on the Y-axis and eliminated the six uh, roller bearings that usually are on this type of printer which ride on either side of this 2040 extrusion now why did he do this well here is a good example of why there is no little or to no movement in this bed it is nice and stiff and it glides back and forth so effortless effortlessly uh, from front to back Will these bend over time because of the weight of this? Absolutely not, because there's very little weight on here. Even when you're doing a big print, there's very little weight on the printer itself. Does this stiffen up and give you better prints? It absolutely does. Is this an upgrade that I would recommend people do? Yes, but I want you to do a little bit more research on linear bearings first. Uh, Brian is a guy who will tinker and get things right before he even shows them to me. Um, and I actually had to beg, borrow, and plead for him to bring this in to me today uh, because he was running prints all weekend. But these linear rails are much stiffer, and you can tell that, than this. This has some flex to it, and I can feel that flex, whereas this has no flex to it at all. It is nice and stiff. So what Brian did in order to manufacture or, or add these to his printer without sacrificing the bottom tray, he made, he 3D printed his own adapter so that the blocks actually screw into the adapter. The adapter screws onto the existing plate, uh, which will go around, has enough clearance to go around the 2040 extrusion and these pillow blocks just sit on either side. Uh, I believe you've got one on either side. I'm not sure. Yes, he's sitting over there so I can ask him questions. Um, there's just a single pillow block on either side, but there's enough surface area to keep this from rocking back and forth. You can see that there's no rock. Um, just try this on your CR-10 at home. There's no rock there at all. Like that is nice and stiff. And... It's going to give you smoother, quieter prints. You know, we've talked about adding uh, stepper dampeners and that, and TL smoothers and all that kind of stuff. But for this type of upgrade, this is also going to add to the quietness of your 3D printer. Now, you can get a lot of noise from this belt, and that's typical. That's fine. I see a lot of noise here. Would it be beneficial to put a bearing here on this extrusion it might be um, is there a precedence for putting it on the back side so that you can ride your x gantry up and down on the z-axis absolutely um, is there a way to do it yet we are working on that <laughs> but uh, right now the the proof of concept is right here this does work now where does it fall back what are what's the disadvantage of getting something like this well First and foremost, it's price. These are probably five times more expensive than buying this. Um, so if you are a tinkerer, I'm not telling our new guys in, the, in our community or anybody that's new to 3D printing to go and upgrade your printers to this. By no means am I telling you that. Um, does this make a difference? Absolutely. But do your research, do your homework on this, because if you don't, these linear rails, if you don't use them properly, they can cause you problems. And like I said, with this one, it's missing some of the ball bearings because it came off and some of the ball bearings fell out. 
this one doesn't move quite nearly as smooth as these ones are moving. And there's very little, what I'm hearing for sound here is the belt and the motor. That's all I'm hearing. I'm not hearing any of the wheels vibrating on that uh, 2040 extrusion. Um, Brian, I believe, is going to be putting up his bracket to allow you to do this to your CR10s. Can you do this to any printer? Pretty much you can. Is there a bracket for this on any printer? No, there isn't. You may have to design your own. Um, but for the more experienced guys, this might be a way to go to help silence and give you that Y-axis stiffness that you're looking for in 3D printing. So there you have it, a look at linear rails. Um, do you have to do anything special to your firmware? Nope, you don't. You can just use the existing firmware that you have. Because it does, firmware doesn't care about the mechanics. It just cares about how far it's got to come forward and how far it's got to come back. That's it. One of the modifications that had to be done to this, of course, and you can't see it here on camera, but Brian had to take his sensor or his uh, end stop and flip it to the other side so that it could catch the metal properly. And that was really the only other drawback to it. Um, other than that, the Z switch. Oh yes, you don't have a Z switch on this. On this side, I should point this out, you'll see that there's this little red block here. This little red block is an extension so that it hits the Z switch properly because this whole bed is elevated just a little bit. And what will happen is when the Z uh, is axis is lowering the, the X axis, it's just a little bit too far away. So Brian made himself this little bumper to hit that, that uh, X axis or Z axis switch. And the reason that he doesn't have to use it is because he's got uh, uh, an ABL sensor, the Creality ABL sensor. We're going to be talking about that in a later episode as well. But for now, that's our look at linear rails. I hope that gave you a little bit of information. I hope that you learned something about it. Um, we are back on Friday night with our first live stream hangout. Um, and uh, that will be at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So that'll be 7 p.m. my time. So if you're in the East, that's going to be around 9 o'clock. If you're in on the West Coast, that's going to be about 6 o'clock. Uh, if you're overseas, because I know we have quite an audience overseas now. If you're overseas, I'm not sure what time that is. So you'll have to just watch. Um, and we are going to be inviting our community members into that hangout. Um, and you can come and ask me your questions live. I believe Brian will be there as well to answer your questions. Frank might be there and uh, or maybe even Jess might be there as well so we'll all be there to answer questions about 3d printing and that's what those live streams are going to be for all right so a few people i want to thank first and foremost i want to thank the benefactor who gives us this lovely space to use each and every week and that is spool 3d now spool 3d has everything that you need from printers to parts and filament so anything that you need, check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right. Print it with Spool 3D. Now, I want to thank my staff who come in and help out with the show from time to time. Well, actually, every week they do that. So behind the controls today is Mr. Frank. Awesome. There we go. There he is. And we got Brian directing me today. He's over in the corner. There he is. <laughs> And uh, Brian Baker is another one of our staff members. And as you know, the lovely Jess Cornaching, who is not with us today. She'll be back here tomorrow for more recording. Oh, and there's Pickle Rick. <laughs> so, yes, the lovely Jess Cornaching and my wife, Geraldine, who bakes all the yummies for us behind the scenes and does a whole bunch of other stuff for us. Um, now, if you uh, are new to the show, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like and share this video, leave a comment down below. If you did a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it don't matter, but leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought. Ring that little bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode. We'd appreciate it. Our numbers keep going up and I couldn't be happier about that. I want to thank all of our Patreons for all of their support. And uh, if you want to become a Patreon, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash the first layer. 
without our Patreons, there are several things we wouldn't have been able to do um, as quickly as we did them. So thank you again to our Patreons. If you don't want a monthly commitment, but you just want to buy us all a coffee, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. And uh, we all drink coffee around here. I love coffee. Brian loves coffee. Frank loves coffee. Jess likes iced coffee, but, you know, Jess is a girl, so she likes all that fruitfully fru stuff. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for being a part of our show today. And I will see you next time right here. And remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great friend.